Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Press Any Button. I'm Nikki. And I'm Eric. And I'm John. <gasps> oh my gosh, who is John? Well, if you listened to our last podcast, you might know that today is a very special episode. It's our 10th episode. Holy crap. And because that's a special occasion, we have a special guest. Yeah, John. John. <laughs> that's me. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. John picked out Bubble Bobble for us to play. Bubble Bobble. And Bubble Bobble is a two-player arcade platformer where you play as Bubble Dragons, Bubby and Bobby, who must save their girlfriends from the <laughs> evil Baron Von Blubba. There are 100 levels of progressing difficulty, and you must clear each level by trapping all the enemies in bubbles and then popping them, transforming their corpses into delicious treats. Spoiler warning, we will be talking about the different endings to the game. Yes, the many, many different endings. I feel like everybody's had enough time to play this game and, you know, get their spoilers out. Right. It's been, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's 35 just, years, it's, so. It's been, yeah. been a few but years. But hey, you know, we like to be fair. We're very fair here. <laughs> I can, I appreciate that. All right. All right. Let's do it. So since today in this special episode, we're going to let John take it away. hey oh hey <laughs> So I'm, I'm excited to learn about the game. You excited, Eric? Yes. All right. Very excited. All right. Cool. So as Eric said in the intro, it's a platform-based game made by Taito in 1986. Uh, he plays two bubble shooting dragons. I think, Eric, their names are actually Bub and Bob. Ooh. And then the boys that they turn into or turn back into are named Bubby and Bobby. Oh. Wow, that's a ridiculous technicality. <laughs> hey, thank you for that, John. <laughs> when it comes to Bubble Bobble, you have to get very technical. <laughs> Already learning stuff. <laughs> Already learning stuff. That's weird that the dragons have a different name it than is weird. their human selves. Like, if your dog transformed into a human, would you give it a new name, or would it just keep the old name? Or oh, I think... Like, if Doctor Doom oh, became... Oh, he would have to keep the name Doctor Doom, yeah. right? Because that'd be the most kick-ass name just you could have, a honestly. Little, little eight-year-old <laughs> boy named Doctor Doom. Yeah. If I ever <laughs> have a kid, furniture. I might just name it Doctor Doom Jr. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to discuss this. <laughs> That's a conversation for a later okay. date. <laughs> Uh, Bubble Bobble was designed by Fukio Mitsuji when he joined Taito in 1986. He basically thought all the games Taito were releasing were boring. Aww. Were were they boring? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, can you do you know any of the other games they did before? Well, the uh, kind of spiritual predecessor to this game is a game called Chack and Pop. Okay. Which is very similar, kind of uh, actually borrows a lot of the same enemies and sprites. It's, there's some you may have heard of, uh, and I was going to get into that in the fun facts, okay. so we can save that. So basically he was just like, yo, y'all's games are boring, hire me, and I'm going to like turn it all around for you. Yeah. He I've said, got oh, some ideas. Some... <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's some confidence right there. Yeah, you get the feeling that this guy was like, you know, he was a go-getter. Nice. And maybe a ladies' man? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? He he said, we should make games that are fun to play. So And he wanted his game to appeal to women, and more specifically, couples that visited arcades. Oh. So this game is you know kind of designed with couples and women in mind. That's I, cool. I did think that there was kind of an absurd amount of hearts in the level design. <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> I thought a, it was a low amount of hearts it could have been more hearts could have been more hearts more <laughs> rainbows more definitely you, you see that's Smiling the balance kittens. between men and women you know this yeah. is the right amount of hearts it is pretty balanced <laughs> i feel like it's pretty balanced masculine and feminine it has a good balance the only hearts that uh men want in games are the ones that you lose when you get stabbed or shot <laughs> or gain right? right yeah when you eh, eat eh. a big old wheel of cheese <laughs> <laughs> or a burrito right <laughs> Or some whack Donald's fries. <laughs> yeah. That's what we call the fries in the game because it has the W on it. We're like, oh, whack Donald's, yeah. I feel like there are quite a few games that have like parody McDonald's 
food items. Yeah, yeah, definitely. yeah that could be a whole other episode, 80s. like <laughs> of McDonald's food parodies and video oh, games. No, that could be a bonus episode. Yeah, I was about to say that's their next bonus episode. <laughs> could be faux McDonald's mm. and video games. I can think of at least one for sure that uh, both my brothers play a lot. That that may be called Whackdonalds or huh. McDonalds or something. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. So this game has a lot of sequels. It has over 20 games in this series what? on all sorts of different platforms. Wow. Huh. Uh, and that's not including the spin-off series called Puzzle Bobble, which huh. in the US is better known as Bust a Move. Oh okay, yeah, okay. that's that's what it's called. That's the game Nikki was thinking of when we originally heard of, you know, Bubble Bobble is, uh, I think she was thinking of Bust a Move. Which... Yeah, because I was thinking of the one where you kind of have like the bullet thing at the end and you're like shooting up to like pop right. the balloons. And that, That's which what become... I originally oh. thought the game was when you when I heard Bubble Bobble. Uh, very close guess. Mm, yes. The same characters, <laughs> same enemies, just a different style. Mm -hmm. And that game inspired a whole genre of upward shooting bubble puzzle games. Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite, Peggle. Yeah, yeah. I remember Peggle. Yeah, I figured that that's very similar. So yeah. probably inspired by that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We might do an episode on that at one point <laughs> in, or another. But uh, anyway, <laughs> carry on, John. <laughs> so wait, there are twenty games. That's man, that's a lot of games. I almost hadn't heard of any other Bubble Bobble games. Me either. Did they have like a different name? Were they all called Bubble Bobble? It, yes and no, and there's a a terrible amount of confusion with the storyline. You know, it reminds me of Kingdom Hearts, how they did a lot of like retconning and you know re-releasing mm -hmm. of yeah. their storyline. Then it just became a whole tangled, mangled mess. There's a, a game called Bubble Bobble Two, but there's also a game called Rainbow Island: The Story of Bubble Bobble Two. <laughs> oh. uh, one of the games is called Bubble Symphony. AKA Bubble Bobble 2. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and that game is a sequel to Bubble Memories, the story of Bubble Bobble 3. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm already confused. Right? There's been, what, three or four Bubble Bobble 2s? There's a lot of Bubble Bobble 2s. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, there's also a Bubble Bobble Junior and Bubble Bobble Double. <laughs> and I don't know if either one of those are sequels or not. <laughs> but it's very confusing. That's nuts. It's like the now that's what I call music of video games. <laughs> now that's what I call Bubble Bubble. Bubble Bubble 19. <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, basically all I've got for the history of the game. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That's cool. Let me guess. Is it time for the fun facts? Fun facts. Yes. Yes. <laughs> nice. My favorite part. Uh, when Mitsuji was thinking about the kind of things that women like to draw or sketch, he created a list of 100 things before deciding on bubbles as the main mechanic. <laughs> so, let me get this straight. A man came up with a list of 100 things yeah. that women would like. Staying up, like, late into the wee hours of the morning <laughs> drinking. Just I thinking would, about the kind of things that women like. I would love like. to see this list. I bet half of them... Are not accurate. I do not think. I do not even think Eric could make a list of a hundred things that women would like. I could make a list of at least two things you like. I could make a list, but bubbles would not be on that list, right? Uh, I mean, that I, would be like ninety nine. I mean, right. I mean, I guess if you're doing a hundred, like when you're, once you get up there, you're like just throwing stuff out that could just be either, or right? Yeah, bubbles like. Who, like, why is that feminine I mean, or masculine? I don't understand. Because I mean, they're I, soft? I would or because they pop? I don't know. <laughs> I would think, like, small children maybe would yeah. be more into, into bubbles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, than, I mean, women when, there's a time and a place where I enjoy a bubble. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Bubbles the, are fun, but I never considered them, like, girly or anything. And he described the bubble mechanic as thrilling and exhilarating. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of what sets it apart from the other games that yeah. are similar to it. The whole bubble feature yeah. is pretty neat. I, mean, it, it's, I yeah. love when you get a whole string of bubbles. Yeah. And they go a whole across the whole room, mm -hmm. and you pop one, and they all pop. Yeah. Yeah, it's really satisfying. The whole yeah. bubble mechanic in the game is super satisfying, I it's think. It's exhilarating. Yeah, I, agree. <laughs> <laughs> I I also wonder what other things are on that list. Obvious yeah. stuff. Like, oh, heart, perfume. It's, um, 
I don't know. I can't even think of a hundred things. Flowers, I am a girl. dresses. One of the sequels oh. is yeah. focused on rainbows, where the dragons who have now been transformed back into boys shoot rainbows out of their hands and use them to climb up. <laughs> uh, super manly. I do like, though, that they, they are trying to focus a game towards women in a time when most video games were not focused towards women at all. Yeah, that's true. So that was really smart on their part. The arcades, I think, back then were kind of a boys' club, mm -hmm. and they were really trying to get women and couples in. So that was his thinking, and supposedly it worked. Nice. Yeah, I mean that's that's really smart. I wonder if it was more like you know the boyfriends went in or the the man or whatever went in and was like, oh, this looks like a game my wife would like or my girlfriend would like, and then went and like brought her and the or brought the women into the arcade, you know? Right. Or if it was more of a situation like. We're on a date night. Let's check out what games we want to play. And then together they're like, oh, this game's cool. I kind of oh. wonder like how it worked, you know? Yeah. And she says, I don't want to go to the arcade. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> There's games for girls. I saw one. Bubble Bobble. It has hearts. <laughs> yeah, look at all the heart shapes in the levels. <laughs> <laughs> look at the bubbles. Isn't Doesn't that lure you in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, women love bubbles. Women love bubbles, apparently. <laughs> Well-known fact. Women love bubbles. Oh, Well-known. <laughs> uh, this game is often listed among the greatest games of all time. Nice. Is that a surprise to you, Eric? <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's a it's a very good game. I, I I put it up there just given the when it came out. This game was probably amazing for 1986, right? Yeah, 1986. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there weren't a lot of games like this back then. I mean that was the same year Mario came out. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Uh, yes. So it's hard to compete with Mario, right? <laughs> but, but but at the same time, you know, and also Duck Hunt. <laughs> the, there weren't platformers <laughs> that were this quality at the time. Yeah. Uh, Maybe besides Mario. Um, Mario. But... Or it's just a different take, too. Like, a different yeah. mechanics. Like, the mechanics are different. And it's kind of a platformer. Like, you know, you're jumping around on blocks and stuff. But, you know, you can't really compare it to any other games that I can think of that came out, like, around that same time. So Yeah, I'd put it up there with one of the, one of the top games. It kind of started a genre, too, of, you know, screen-clearing puzzle games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if it was the first in that genre, but it inspired a lot of other games. Hmm. I can see that. Yeah, and as far as like lists, it kind of surprised me. It was number 23 out of 100 on IGN's Greatest NES Games. Wow. Number 71 out of 100, Yahoo's 100 Greatest Games of All Time. Jeez. Greatest Games of All Time. I'm really surprised I'd never heard of this game before you, yeah. you know, chose it for this episode. Like, I definitely heard it. I had it on Nintendo. Uh I'd like to play it with Austin sometimes yeah, if he, when he would play brother. it with me. <laughs> <laughs> it was very similar for me. That yeah. was the first video game I ever bought Oh wow. when oh. I was like five years old or something. Is that why you chose it? It is. Oh, that's <laughs> you said, awesome. Pick okay. something that's uh, close to you, means something to you. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, awesome. Uh, apparently bubbles appeal to more than just women, you know. Right. <laughs> I like bubbles. Small yeah. child. Small children too. <laughs> I don't know if it's the feminine side of me, but I'm going to admit it here. I like bubbles. Yeah. Who doesn't I mean, like bubbles? I don't know. Yeah. you got to be like a psycho killer or something <laughs> if you don't like bubbles. You know what's cool, uh, and I would never encourage anybody to smoke. Smoking's bad for you. But if you're already smoking, <laughs> uh, get some bubble solution and blow smoke into a bubble. And then when it pops, it oh. just a cloud of smoke. That's kind of neat. Yeah, it makes smoking <laughs> even cooler. Uh, yeah. I, think, I think I've seen Don't people do it with like vapes. Kids. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, vape tricks. Yeah. Bring the bubbles in. Uh, yeah, don't smoke www.vapetricks.com. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sponsor for today. That's totally the website. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, don't actually go to that website. <laughs> <laughs> and again, do not smoke. <laughs> yeah, no smoking, please. Um, Unless you're doing vape tricks. <laughs> right. Well, vaping is different from smoking. Yeah, it's so different. <laughs> <laughs> it won't give you cancer at all. <laughs> so are there any more fun facts? Yes. <gasps> oh, so many today. The game was also featured in the Emmy Award winning Black Mirror episode, San Junipero, which is about uh, a woman who is in a simulation late in her life to kind of recapture her youth and uh, is trying to find love. And one of the scenes is 
Uh, she meets a man who tells her about this game, how you can only get the true ending with <laughs> uh, by playing it on two-player. Oh, wow. So they oh. had the, the arcade version of this game. They did. Nice. And it was kind of alluded to the whole storyline of the episode, which is interesting. Cool. <laughs> I have never watched that uh, show yet, but I've heard from many, many people that I should watch it. Yeah, so It's supposed here. to be really, really good. It's really good. Just watch that one episode. Okay. We'll I'm, definitely check it out. I'm not good at keeping up with television. <laughs> it's true. There's too Eric much. Sucks it's it. too much. Eric sucks at it. <laughs> it's all golden age. It's all good. <laughs> There's too much of it. Now, another fun fact. The game will not allow you to enter the word sex as a high score name. <laughs> what? It will automatically change it to H dot exclamation point. Huh. Well, what does H dot exclamation point mean? I don't know. Maybe it's like... Sex, obviously. <laughs> right, yeah. It means sex secretly. I mean, pop. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it will let you put ass, because uh, we did that, and it did not change <laughs> yeah, it right. at all. I literally just put ass in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's censoring and the wrong words. Have you tried that on the Switch? I wonder if that's just the arcade game. So, I did like, try it on the I, Switch. Did it, it change it? Change it. Nice. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's kind of funny that even on your own console, it changes. I can see why yeah. at the arcade, you know, you don't want some little kid walking by, I guess, and seeing the word sex, but... Ass is fine. Ass, ass is fine. Is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a game designed for couples, but uh, it's not a game designed for premarital couples. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because no sex. Right, uh, yeah. You can uh, be a couple, yeah. but this, this game does not promote sex at all. Just bubbles. Other Taito games you may have heard of include Kiwi Craze, uh, Double Dragon. Nice. You heard of that one? Oh, yeah. Uh, and Space Invaders. Oh, Space Invaders. Which is probably their most popular game. I was definitely that, know that one. For was that sure. the boring game he was talking about? He's like, ah, oh, Space Invaders sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lame. Where are the bubbles? Right. <laughs> There's not enough hearts in Space Invaders. <laughs> Space Inv Invaders is pretty fun. No, I know. No, I'm joking. It's a good game. I know. I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, th I like it. Uh, Taito games you've probably never heard of include <laughs> Robot Bowl, Sunshine Egg, and Sky Shark. Sky Shark. Ooh. <laughs> Those that games sounds fun. sound amazing. <laughs> Why haven't we heard of them? <laughs> right? I picked the most ridiculous well, sounding games Now I games want to know what Sky list. Shark is all about. Like, he's a shark that flies around? What is Robot Bowl? Like <laughs> B-O-W-L? Yeah, I Bowl? think it's either like football with robots oh, or okay. like a robotic bowl that like holds your cereal and also feeds it to you that's where my head went yeah <laughs> it was a robotic bowl <laughs> right. i wouldn't mind like you know these our animals get robotic bowls that feed them food oh, why yeah. can't i have a robotic bowl <laughs> and that should be a video game <laughs> yeah why can't that also be a video game well apparently it is uh and we just never heard of it yeah <laughs> definitely never heard of it and that's it for the fun fact oh so sad. <laughs> More facts. <laughs> but, you know, we can talk about what we liked about the game. Yeah. Woo! The what pros. do you like about the game, Eric? I like that the game is fun. <gasps> That's what I have as my first <laughs> one, too. I said fun, low stress. Yeah. So the two main mechanics, trying to trap enemies in bubbles and then trying to figure out how to pop the bubbles are pretty fun. For one, some enemies can be trapped for a while. Some enemies pop right away and they get angry. And then also the bubbles can float to different areas in the stage and it can be a challenge to try to figure out how to get to the areas to pop the enemies. Yeah. So yeah, it's, I, like, I like the mechanics. I like it too. Fun games are good games. Yeah. Fun, fun games are good. Just low stress, you know? Yeah. Didn't have to worry too much. Yeah. <laughs> I also, I, one of my pros is that the game is... It's very intuitive. It's yeah. an easy game to pick up. It's oh, great yeah. for any age or gamer level. It offers enough of a challenge that, like, it's difficult for me in parts. But I also feel like if I wanted to introduce, you know, 
a kid who'd never played games before to a game, this would be at the top of my list of first games to play. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Pretty easy to pick up. Not too many things you have to learn. There's only only two things you can do. Jump and blow bubbles. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> and as long as you have an endless supply of quarters, you know, you can go on forever. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I was about to say. I bet it was a little bit harder if you're actually playing it in the arcade, unless you just had like a million quarters to, to oh, spend. Yeah. yeah. But um, on the Switch version, you pretty much can't really game over. So... You, you just get free keep quarters. respawning. Yeah, you get free you get free quarters. So you get free lives all the time. <laughs> You're losing money if you don't play this game. Exactly. <laughs> free quarters. Free quarters, guys. Uh, what about you, Nikki? Uh, what did you like? Well, one of the things that I just talked about was that you can't really die. That's a you know, considering the games I've been playing lately where just I just die all the time and I have to start all the way over. Hades. <laughs> um <laughs> This one was nice because I didn't have to start over at all. <laughs> Not even once, except for after we beat the game and then we start over, which yeah. is fine. <laughs> or if you're playing by yourself and you don't remember to hold the start button and then you get the game over. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Didn't you do that once? <laughs> I, I, for some reason, I felt like it wasn't always registering when I was mm, trying sure, to hold it, it was down. The That game's happened to me fault. a yeah. lot too, honestly. <laughs> oh, think, okay. Maybe it was the game. I think it might be <laughs> bugged or something. Another thing I have is the characters are really cute. Even the enemies are kind of cute. I like the two little dragons. I don't know. Yeah. The I, levels are cute. It's a cute game. I, I guess that's the feminine part. <laughs> it, it is a pretty very cute, cute game. <laughs> uh, I compare that to the the kind of modern iterations of the dragon, the dragons in uh, Bubble Bubble for Friends we played a little bit. Mm -hmm. They're just not as cute. I don't know why, but like, the bubble, the shooting bubble mechanic, like where the little dragon throws its entire head back to shoot the bubble, <laughs> like that, like I love that. And then the 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 new one, they're just kind of like opening their mouths, like mm. yeah, it's like Cleep. yeah, just not the same. Yeah. yeah, the head flapping in the original reminds me a lot of like a Muppet. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Just you know, rah, 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 rah. yeah, exactly. I can see that. Yeah, and then just like in the newer version, it's still cute, but not as cute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so did you have anything else you liked? or Another pro that I had uh, is the game inspires teamwork. Yeah. yeah. I have uh, that it's a great co-op mode game, too. Yeah. Yeah, because teamwork is Make, fun. The teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah. E even if one half of the team is doing a little bit more work than the other <laughs> half of the team. <laughs> it's also much easier as a team, I feel like, because you can, you know, throw bubbles to each other to jump on. You can, if you're both getting your half of the enemies, well, you can just make stages fly by rather than having to like do a stage by yourself where you're trying to wrangle them all. Mm -hmm. Right. The game doesn't add more enemies with a second player. It's the yeah. same levels either way, so it rewards you for finding friends or girlfriends or boyfriends to play with you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and because you can't really die, there's not a lot of, like, getting mad, you know, oh. at each other because you messed it up or anything like that. <laughs> or or the, back to the stress thing, or you feeling stressed because, like, you might drop the ball on, like, having to start all the way over. You don't as, have to worry about that. As long as you yeah. have quarters. <laughs> right. I also thought that the game does a really good job at increasing in difficulty. Like, it, it increases in difficulty at a good pace, I think. Yes. There's not, like, one part where it all of a sudden just gets really hard or anything. All of a sudden, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it definitely ramps up, for sure. There are a few levels that are uh, oddly difficult. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I can think of one or two that are just kind of like... That level is way too hard for where it's placed in the pecking order yeah. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the quarter eating levels. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The cool. last pro I have is that the music's very catchy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's a okay. good segue. I, I good grew up segue. playing this game, so I have a lot of nostalgia for the music, and I, I like it. I hate it so much. <laughs> <laughs> That's segueing into the cons. That's my number one, first one on the list is music. It is very repetitive. So it's not that the song is bad. It's just that they don't change it. It's the exact right. same song, all 100 levels. You don't like that that's going to play in your head for the next several weeks while you're trying to go to sleep? No. <laughs> <laughs> and from what I kind of get from, you know, talking to a couple people about the game, I feel like if you played this game as a kid, then you like the music. Cause it's mm. kind of nostalgic, but 
if maybe if you're new or like me <laughs> and it doesn't have any like ties to memories or anything you're like oh my god this song is uh, annoying <laughs> I would say they could have swapped it out after like 20 levels or something. <laughs> they could have, they, because it's one song, right? It's one song on it's continuous. It's one time. song. I think depending on I think if get, you get certain items, the music changes. Yeah, it might get faster at some point Yeah, or it, if you start running out of time, it gets faster. The boss has its own music. And that being said, I think anytime the music changes, it doesn't get better. <laughs> <laughs> the boss music is a lot more hectic and repetitive and any like bonus round music is just like two notes back and forth yeah yeah so yeah i also put that on my cons is that the the music can be <laughs> uh, can be get old quick oh yeah yeah one fun thing that we tried and i would definitely recommend anyone listening if you're going to play the game just like put it on mute and then play like Metallica, like Inner Sandman, <laughs> That's awesome. yeah. or like some Chop Suey, or yeah, any just kind some of... kind of like fun rock music. It really changes the tone. I would say metal specifically game. makes this game better. Yeah, Screamo, especially like with the, the cute in contrast with the cute little dragons. Blah, blah, blah. Oh yeah, it's like <laughs> <laughs> smiling Hush rosy little cheek baby, little dinosaur. Don't say a word. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but that was kind of like, I was giggling the whole time just because, yeah, we're playing this really cute game and it's like Metallica, yeah. <laughs> but it was fun. It, it's definitely better than listening to the uh, game music. <laughs> yeah. I'd say Leonard Skinner goes really well, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Leonard Skinner pairs well with Bubbles. Yeah. I also don't like this in some levels. Like, you can get stuck, and the only way um, out is to just wait for the ghost guy to I, come and kill you. <laughs> I hate that. That's I, on my list, too. I hate being, like, specifically, I can think of uh, that one, one of the early levels with the whales, where it, you have all these different slots. Oh, it's like a mm -hmm. candelabra. Yeah. And, yeah. That's exactly what you're talking about. And, and most of those spots you can get stuck in, except for the middle one, where you can kind of bounce on your own bubbles. You have enough room to make your own bubbles to right. bounce on. And even yeah. that is super difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just a it's one of those really frustrating early stages and it's like I feel like it's just not well designed because immediately anywhere you jump up, you get stuck or if you fall in, you get stuck. It's like just so easy to get stuck in that level where you just have to wait it out or hope Yeah, your and it takes a, sometimes it takes everything. a little while for the the time to run out before like the ghost well comes yeah. to kill you. So and it's you're always just, you're just like jumping 5,000 times hoping one of them will like <laughs> might be different but it, it, it never yeah. works so you're, you're just stuck it's, it's pretty hilarious you're just jumping trying to get those bubbles to come out like come on <laughs> stay come on. stay like don't and pop occasionally you might just get one out and you're like oh my god i can do it and then it's like no that was no. just a freak accident <laughs> <laughs> or it goes the wrong direction it goes over your head mm -hmm. i agree for the most part but i would argue that it was designed with the idea in mind that they're just going to be eating more quarters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you learn the traps, and that's what makes the game have better replay value. Mm, maybe, but it still yeah. feels unfair Yeah, for the most part. I, I would just, like, if if you had some way, like, if you had some ray of hope where you could, you could maybe get yourself unstuck. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way to learn about those traps until you fall into them, mm -hmm. yeah. which seems very unfair. It does, especially if you are paying quarters. Gosh, yeah. there's. Oh, like, I think a lot of arcades are like that, right? Just yeah. You I know, guess that makes a zombie sense, that if but... you don't know to turn around and kill it, it's gonna bite you. Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense. How else are they gonna make money? But still, <laughs> <laughs> I, I gotta say that final boss is completely ridiculous. I don't know how you go about beating it in one life. It's it's nuts. Oh yeah, in the arcade, I don't know. If, oh man, I don't know if I could beat that. Uh, so just to give you an idea. The boss is, he's a giant sprite. Yeah, he's probably like 50 times bigger than you are. Yeah, and then, and then, he, just, and then he just kind of like ping pongs off all the walls, kind of like uh, a screensaver. Or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he shoots fire like every, you know, couple seconds in almost all directions. There are, there are a few little gaps where you can kind of squeeze in. So, so your best bet is trying to like go into the corner and hope he doesn't ping pong into the corner. Mm -hmm. And then trying to like get in between those flames, I guess. But oh, it yeah. just it's so ridiculous. Like And if you make the mistake of not 
popping his bubble <laughs> fast enough when oh. uh, when you actually get him in the bubble, he's really angry and he just like is pinging around faster and then, then it really gets like yeah, hard. Yeah, you basically have to do the entire boss fight again. And, but it's and even harder. Except yeah. it's even harder and he's you even faster. You have to faster. be even fat and you have to be even faster. It's like, oh yeah. my gosh. I, I didn't even know a second time we played through, it was like, I didn't realize that he could actually, there was a chance he could break out. So I was taking my time getting up there. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that either. We, we learned that the hard way. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no like bonus reward or anything for beating his hard mode. It's just... It's the same exact score just or whatever. A pun yeah, it's a punishment mm -hmm. yeah. for not killing him fast enough. And I have one more complaint, okay? Oh, yeah. If this game is supposed to be targeting women, why are the girlfriends in trouble why are the girlfriends chained up <laughs> in a jail okay <laughs> like as a female i don't want to see a girl trapped up like i want to be the one saving someone you know like yeah. they got that part wrong and i felt like they were just copying like all the other games you know it's like oh it's always like that's a dude saving trope. a girl yeah, yeah. and this came out a long long time ago so yeah yeah i get it but if you are trying to specifically make it to appeal to women like why are the women the ones in trouble? I agree. <laughs> if we were to remake that game, it would have been like a brother and sister saving their girlfriend and boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah, that would make more sense. Exactly. So that was my final complaint. What about you guys have any more cons you'd mm, like to bring up? Nah, I think we covered all mine. No, other than what we listed, the game is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, uh, we can now move on to Eric's favorite topic. Let's talk strategy. <laughs> Let's talk about strategy. Hmm. Nikki, what kind of strategies did you employ while playing this game? Um, I literally had no strategy. <laughs> Usually my strategy is just not to die, but in this one, it really didn't matter. So I was just like having fun. <laughs> um, you know, just my strategy was to have fun. I did a good job at it. Great strategy. <laughs> Should well, be a strategy in all games. Well, I bet you guys probably had some strategy, like, for real, though. So, uh, what was your strategy? So, if you want to jump on the bubbles, you can actually just hold the jump button. Oh, yeah. I did know that. Yeah. That and was something I did not know growing up that I oh, learned years yeah. later. And yeah. it just saved me so much more trouble. Uh, I mean, the, the bubble still will occasionally pop, even when you're holding it down, which is, seems unfair, but it does make jumping on the bubbles much, much easier. And it's especially good for or the stages that are required to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you, John? You have any strategy? Yeah, I've got a few strategies. Uh, in a lot of the levels, there's not a lot of time or space to trap the enemies in the bubbles. And oftentimes, the moment you trap them in a bubble, they break out about a second later. And yeah. become a lot more difficult. Yeah, like those butterfly things. Yeah. Yeah. So one technique, and I've read it described as kissing, is where you get so close to the enemy that the second you <laughs> trap them in a bubble, they automatically pop. Oh. And you probably did that unintentionally. Yeah, I did that unintentionally yeah, a, a lot. <laughs> That's a good idea, That's though. That's a good strategy. Yeah, you don't get combos, mm -hmm. but you just knock those enemies out. Uh, another strategy I have and this relates to the endings of the game, mm -hmm. is one of the endings requires both players to be at the last boss fight and beat the boss together. But you can go through the whole game by yourself, and the second you trap the boss in a bubble, before you pop him, <laughs> two-player can just Jump put a coin in. in and start, and then you beat the boss, and it counts as two players beating the game. Dang, oh, so you get the yeah. good end. So, okay. That's cool. That's awesome. So like right right before you pop the boss's bubble, you could throw a quarter in the uh, second player's slot. That's right. Just and to get the alternative ending or whatever. Just yeah. to get the good ending or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. so it you, is that cheating, If you didn't though. have a girlfriend to bring you the arcade, <laughs> and you could still get all the endings. Yeah. <laughs> hey, or boyfriend. <laughs> or boyfriend. <laughs> One thing I found kind of helped me was there was a timing element when you're trying to jump up a bubble column. Like if you released a bubble, like right before the height of your jump, you could continuously jump up. Like if you're trying to elevate yourself, if you were kind of in, in a, a tight spot. Right. So I would employ Like it. so the bubble would move up with you uh, every time you jump? No, no, you would, you would let it go. And then right as you were 
about the peak of your jump and then you'd hit the peak of your jump and you'd bounce off that. Oh, oh, like use as a jumping. Yeah, that's uh, that's yeah. how I was getting up there. Well, when you were kind of struggling. <laughs> uh, the many times I was struggling. <laughs> some of those levels just pull all the bubbles down to the bottom of the room. Yeah, yeah. So you they have don't to even like float up. Force them to be high enough to yeah. gain altitude. That's where the teamwork comes in. I guess a little bit of the strategy that, that I would... did have was like in with the teamwork we'd be like okay I'm gonna blow the bubbles you're gonna jump that kind of thing oh, yeah. I love just that just to kind of teamwork it so you don't have to try to blow your own bubbles and then jump on it yeah, yeah. nobody loves blowing their own bubbles yeah <laughs> another strategy to get higher scores is if you defeat the last enemy in a room with the penultimate numbers in your score matching like if you had a score of 1330 or 440 or 550, all of the extra bubbles in the room will pop and turn into food items. Oh, I always what? wondered why that happened. Wait, say that again? So if the score you have when you pop the last enemy bubble, if the, the penultimate numbers in that score, like what does 440, that mean? Oh. like the, the sec second and third numbers. Oh, okay. Uh, if they match, like <gasps> oh, 330 okay, or okay. 440 or yeah. 550, mm -hmm. then all of the extra unpopped bubbles in the room turn oh, into items. Okay, cool. Yeah, we did that a couple of times. Uh, I don't know. I just thought there was different amounts of rewards for different um, yeah, it's, levels. It's, it's, so I didn't really... Just, I didn't, yeah, I didn't kinda, catch kinda that. It seemed random. Like, okay, it definitely I, seems I, random. I guess they're just turning... All the bubbles are turning into this time that's cool well, that's neat though I yeah know, i wonder why that is it's kind of random i think a lot of games would do that just like the random number generator was related to the score you had okay. yeah uh another thing is depending on how many bubbles you blow that will determine whether you get the candies faster okay so if you're just if you have time to spare just blow as many bubbles as you can. <laughs> so there's a higher chance yeah. to get a piece of candy in the next room cool cool yeah yeah i didn't know that so what's going on in the bubble bobble future in the bubble bobble future let me guess there's probably going to be some sequels <laughs> <laughs> i think at this point we'd be fools not to assume there's going to be now that's what i call sequels. bubble bobble 2020. <laughs> <laughs> featuring that song that plays over and over again <laughs> the joke is it's going to be the 2000th and 20th version of the game <laughs> not with robot bowl <laughs> <laughs> nice uh, so this version of the game that you guys played actually came out in on March 25th of this year. Oh, okay. So it's almost future. It's very recent past. <laughs> so the <laughs> Bubble Bobble for Friends, like the newer game that's on the one that we bought, because the one we bought has the new game and the arcade game, the new game is the new game, I guess. Yeah, that new version <laughs> it's is, not is like brand a, new. It's, a it's new not story. like a remastered or anything. It's like a new, you said new story and everything. That's right. Okay, cool. That's a new cool. story. Yeah, that's pretty, that's really new. <laughs> yeah. That was like uh, last month, basically. Uh, yeah, a if we had ago. done this, uh, you know, three months ago, it would have been in the future. It's cool that they paired it up with the arcade version. It's just a little like, oh, bonus. basically a free game, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a little add-on. Cool. That's cool. Okay, so I did find a future fact. Puzzle Bobble VR Vacation Odyssey is releasing on May 20th on Oculus. The first-person game is said to include 100 levels in story mode, letting you physically take aim with handheld slingshots, match colors, and burst 3D bubble clusters to progress through the island environments. That sounds fun. Yeah, Puzzle Bobble. That sounds like a really like a fun VR game. You know, a lot of them that you hear about are like super realistic, like zombie fighting or uh, like a horror game or something, you know. Lots of YouTube videos of people <laughs> getting scared and falling over in oh, yeah. Oculus classes. Or like but, um, hurting themselves by running into a wall right. and tripping yeah. over furniture. Oh yeah. But this one sounds fun. Like it just sounds like true to the original or the other games you know just kind of low stress fun game yeah as exhilarating I and thrilling it. as bubbles are i don't think they're gonna freak me out in vr <laughs> <laughs> and um like who like how can you not have fun shooting a slingshot i mean that's like the epitome of fun right there right yeah. <laughs> it's every bart simpson's dream exactly <laughs> and, and we all know chicks dig bubbles so women are going to be into it <laughs> and boys love slingshots oh going after appealing to couples again <laughs> appealing to couples <laughs> 
one of the only other things that I could find is that uh, Bubble Bobble joins the Numskull Designs Quarter Arcade family. So, <laughs> they are a company that makes one-fourth scale replicas of arcade games. So I guess you can have like a little version on your table I've or seen whatever. Those little countertop cool. arcades. Yeah, and Bubble Bobble recently got added to their line, I guess. So that that comes out in March 2021, or came out in March 2021 this year. Okay, so the recent future. Yes, I mean you know future from 1986. <laughs> <laughs> Relative to the game. Oh yeah. Did you guys find anything else? Is nah. there a Bubble Bobble movie coming out? I wish. <laughs> a Bubble Bobble Netflix series? <laughs> uh, starring, starring Rob Snyder. <laughs> Probably would be a pretty cute animated series, not going to lie. Who would do the voices in a, in a Bubble Bobble animated series? <laughs> they... hmm. Rob Schneider. Yeah, Rob Schneider. <laughs> Paul Rudd and Seth Rogen. Yeah. <laughs> John go. Cena and, <laughs> and the, Dwayne, Rock. the Rock Johnson. <laughs> and Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> Dwayne the Bubble oh, wait, Johnson. Guess, wait. Because, you know, it's 2021, they might just change and have, like, a girl do one of the voices. You mean you have know? a storyline that's not quite as sexist? Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be great. So we've, we've come to the part of the podcast that usually everyone wants to know about the most. Did we complete the challenge that John gave us? I got to know. John, would you like to remind us what the challenge was? So the challenge that I gave you was to get all three endings in the Bubble Bubble arcade game. Yeah, we definitely did not get all three <laughs> endings. How uh, many endings did you get? We got two. Yeah, we got two. That's great. Well, we got the... But I feel like we kind of cheated to get one of them. A little. Which well, endings did you of. get? We got the, uh, the good ending, and then we got the true ending. Wow. I feel like those are the two yeah. hardest ones. I don't know. I, I don't know. I kept like, trying to get the bad in it. I feel like the hardest one was going to be the one where you have to go 1 through 20 levels without dying at all. That so, was, that was we part did not of the, get that. That was part of the true. That, that's why I said we kind of cheated to get the oh, true. Oh, we did. Because uh, that gives you the cipher that we never got, and we just oh. looked it up on the internet. So we kind of cheated to get that. I don't think it probably would have counted anyway, but then the bad ending was tough because I felt like I tried it on my own a few times, and it seemed like... I would game over because I, it either didn't register me holding the start button down or I would forget to hold it down. And I kept having to restart because if you're not holding a start button yeah. down, when you lose your last life, it just goes to the game over screen and there's no way to continue. Yeah, which yeah. Is, makes it that much harder. I yeah. always forget to load more credits in. Yeah. So basically, we beat 1 through 100 levels on regular mode. And then we beat one through a hundred levels on super mode. Yeah. Okay. So and you did. get the the password to unlock super mode by beating the first twenty levels without dying. Yes. yes. But like so. Eric said, we did do a little googling and we did a little cheating. I, I guess I never specifically said you couldn't <laughs> Google. <laughs> exactly. So it's not uh, really yeah. cheating. Yeah, I feel like it wasn't really. But also, spirit. we didn't get all three endings anyway, so <laughs> yeah. you guys get to hear us rap. <laughs> uh, what, what about you, John? Did you uh, have you ever done? Uh, have you ever gotten all three endings? So, uh, I grew up playing the the NES version, which I believe only had two endings: the bad ending and the happy ending. Okay. Okay. So playing this arcade version was kind of a new thing for me also. It's very similar, the game mechanics, although I think it's a little bit more difficult. And the kind of goal that I gave myself was to try to beat the first 20 levels without dying. And I got so close. <laughs> <laughs> but I could not do it. I kept okay. dying on level 18. Basically. I knew, I knew, like, if you couldn't do it, there's absolutely no way I'm going to do it. <laughs> uh, we did try. We got to, I like, did try. We got, level 11, I think. Yeah, 11, yeah a level killer. 11 was the highest that we that got without dying at all yeah. for both of us. Just with all the whales yeah. kind of in the middle and they yeah. release from the bubbles yeah. way too fast. I hate the yeah. whales. They're the worst. Yeah. <sighs> So, yeah, I guess that does mean we do have to wrap. Hooray. <laughs> and I guess since you didn't be your own goal, you're welcome to join us. Yeah, well, do you want to do our little rap, like rappy rap? I'd be kind of a hypocrite to ask you to rap and not to uh, rap alongside you. Awesome. <laughs> so you guys are in a, for a special treat today. You get a, a trio rap. 
a, a three-parter rap. <laughs> I don't know. What's the street term for that? <laughs> a group rap? <laughs> a rap triad. A yeah. rap triad the today. The street name is rap triad. <laughs> yeah. So let's get into it. All right. Let's hear it. Languishing in caves by the sea I'm trapped here with my brother who goes by Bub B We were hanging with our girls Bree and Patty When low key to a tree I went to take a pee A motherfucking ghost whale What the hell? It began to wail and trap their girls in bubble jail to no avail I quickly tried to pay the bail Stopped his tail and I assail Bubbles now when I exhale Yo my name is Betty not Bree, boy get it right if you're gonna save me after a hundred levels you should know better it's like going out in winter without a sweater while you're out there busting bubbles i'm back in jail hitting doubles super drunk is now eating out of my palm so remember me bub and stay calm in 1986, Taito made Bubble Bobble. Mr. Mitsuji thought Taito's gaming catalog was awful. Staying up late, dreaming of brothels and models, he created a game appealing to women. A platformer puzzle that was made for couples. Cute dinosaurs shooting bubbles from the muzzles. Hustle and bustle, put the bad guys in a bubble. Spikes on your back, turn the bubbles into puddles. Cave of monsters, no picks, no shovels, no rubble. Just a tunnel of trouble. Stumble and struggle, save girls on the double. Power of friendship, anything is possible, Bubble. Wow, that was a that was a crazy rap. Holy moly! I liked it. I had fun. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. I know. Speaking for your audience, we all love to hear you rap. So, you guys either need to do harder challenges for each other, or maybe if you give a challenge and they complete it, then you have to rap. <laughs> One of you needs to be rapping <laughs> at all times. We need to be rapping. I don't know. Adding uh... to rap is also a lot more work. So, <laughs> fair enough. It will uh, continue to be kind of spotty, I think. It's also more valuable if it's a treat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, Nikki, uh, you picked the game this week? Yeah, and I actually wanted to go back a little and, play, and pick something. Uh, instead of picking a game that we've never played, I wanted to pick a game that we have played a lot. Hmm. Um, this game is probably on the top of both of our lists, I think, if we were to you know, be asked what games you play the most. And, um, well, do you want to take a guess at what game it is? Is it Overwatch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I may or may not have told you beforehand, but whatever. <laughs> I had yeah, no I idea. Pick... I had already, I had ejected that from my memory <laughs> so long ago. But I... yeah, I wanted to pick Overwatch. It's a, it's a game that we played a lot when it very first came out, and we actually just kept playing it. We still play it pretty often, but recently we haven't had time to play it as much we've been um, because we've it. been playing some new games which is fun so i'm going to take it back to overwatch and are you ready for a challenge sure all right it's gonna be kind of hard i'm not gonna lie your <laughs> your challenge is in a single match playing as anna you need to get 25 kills wow <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who don't play Overwatch very much, Anna is a healer. And it's kind of hard to actually kill people with her. <laughs> but Eric was bragging the other day that he kills people with her all the time. I do so kill people with her all the time. Let's <laughs> see. Let's test it. Let's see how good Eric is at playing Anna. 25 is not the number of kills I typically get with her, but yeah, well, we'll see. We'll see. I usually don't get any kills with her. What's your so. high score kill count with her? <laughs> I have no idea. I'll have to look that up. Yeah. So, um, I don't know if you're going to be able to do it. You might get a, get a rap from Eric. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Which, according to John, is what everyone wants anyway. So, hey. <laughs> All right. win-win. Yeah. All right. So, I hope everyone enjoyed, and um, see you next time. Yeah. Have a good one. Thanks for having me. Bye. As 
as always, if you liked what you hear, please leave us a review and follow us on social media. We'd also love to hear your opinions on anything that we talked about. Um, so please interact with us on Instagram. And we also have been streaming on Twitch lately. So if you're interested in watching some games be played, tune into that. It's press any button pretty much everywhere. And thanks again for listening.